Today, we're gonna share one of my old journals from a trip to the Forest of Ecuador and see what we can learn from those pages and enjoy that experience. One thing I did on that trip a lot was I sketched wherever I was. So even if I wasn't necessarily in a nature setting, I would continue to, to use a nature journaling approach and a sketching approach to document my experience and also to pass the time. So for example, I had this layover in the Las Vegas airport, which I thought was a fascinating place. And I, and I took notes of that and I did sketches while I was there. So continuing to to use your sketching and journaling tools wherever you are can be really useful. I, I used to spend a lot of time, I haven't been doing this as much lately, I must admit I've gotten lazy on a couple trips, so you can't be too hard on yourself, but I used to do a lot of sketching of people sitting. It's a good warm up. And you can see here, I think, uh, yeah, these are some sketches of the planes. There was also all of these um, it was really funny in the Las Vegas airport, there were a whole bunch of um, slot machines and gambling options and trying to draw some of the structures there. I was also getting ready to practice, um, I was trying to come up with uh, options for nature journaling in humid, high humidity conditions because I was predicting that I was going to be dealing with that in the Amazon. Um, here's some more just uh, note taking and writing. I got stuck in the Lima airport. so. While I was stuck there, I drew um, a bit of this plane, and I think this is the Lima Harbor, and just a bunch of notes. And journaling is really a good way to, to, to deal with um, whatever's going on for you and kind of just process that. So a long layover is using your journal to deal with that is the perfect, perfect thing. Um, here's a sketch I did. I think this is the most time I've ever spent sketching a plane, but if you're stuck in an airport, it's a perfect thing to do. And a lot of the stuff, you know, there's a lot of the shapes and everything will apply to nature journaling. I sure did a lot of um, color studies um, on this trip, and I was really interested in color at that time. Here you can see some more color studies. Color studies are a really good thing to do when you don't feel like you have very much energy otherwise for, for journaling. And so... Um, it doesn't take that much work and you can just practice. These are just practices of my different grays that are in my palette that I wanted to get more familiar with how those different grays worked. And then uh, my first arrival in Quito, in the capital um, city of Ecuador, I just did a lot of, you can see I have metadata up here, but I just did a lot of um, written processing and description of my experience. And I do have this, um, small sketch of a bird that I saw in some type of um, honeysuckle tree. And you can see even just a little sketch like this adds a lot to an experience if you're traveling. When you look back at it later, I mean there's loads of stuff that I can get from looking at it. Here's um, an urban scene from the hostel where I was staying and um, there's a lot of things that it was just fun to observe from the patio at the hostel where I was staying. I visited in Quito, there's a nice botanical garden, and, and here's a sketch that I did in that botanical garden. I was practicing getting ready for drawing lots of foliage because I was gonna be visiting the Amazon region. And you can see, see here, this is a technique I like to use in my nature journaling is that um, I have just kind of a running list of the bird sounds that I hear, and then I also have, um, you know, just notes about what I'm seeing in the in the gardens. Here is a really fun perspective on this tree. There are also birds visiting, but they're usually pretty quick. So one good way to observe birds is to draw a tree. And while you're drawing the tree, a lot of times birds will visit because you're in one spot for a long time. I also got to visit the orchid house and here's an example where I was actually a little bit overwhelmed. The orchids were so amazing and there were so many of them and I think I was getting a little bit tired at that point in the day that I didn't draw as many of the orchids as I would have liked to. I think on this trip, I only, in the orchid house, I didn't even draw any flowers. I drew um, like this phyllodendron and stuff like that. And I think in retrospect, probably what was happening is 
this thing that I, I, I've referred to before, but that it's harder to draw things that you're emotionally connected to. So if you're, if you're more into something, it can make it harder to draw because you're worried about messing it up. So I love flowers and I love orchids and these ones just were sort of intimidating. Here you can see some of these bromeliads and so I just focused instead drawing foliage. Sometimes it's good to, to be able to just do something simple, but I think I was kind of being a little bit avoidant there. I had a really great experience. I didn't get quite the best drawing of it per se, but at least I recorded it. There was a really great experience watching this hummingbird feeding on the flowers of this, I think it's a Puya species of Puya, which is in the bromeliad family. And I described the event here. So a lot of times, uh, you know, the description of the event in, a, in an action sequence can be, can capture more information. This would have been a good opportunity to use a comic um, a nature comic like I described in my other video, but in this instance, I was a little bit I didn't have the energy and um, hadn't been practicing that very much lately. Some days of uh, all I only had like when I was staying in Quito, all I would do is you know some of these color panels, but that still adds something. And I would often try to make these based on um, the environment where I was or the building or whatever. So this is still in the um, the urban setting before I go out. Um, Here's another thing that I learned on this trip is that the, those, what brand is it? It's the, um, I think it's the, the Pintel, um, Kuratake brushes, these, um, big, uh, black ink brushes. They, they can be problematic if you bring them on the plane. So what happened to me is I was about to start doing some drawing of this bamboo using this. And uh, maybe it was the elevation in Quito is at a high elevation or it had to do with the plane. I'm not sure. But as soon as I opened, opened this up, it just squirted out all of this black ink. So that was a little bit messy. So I'm not convinced that these are totally safe if you're going to be traveling on a plane. Um, I nature journaled about bamboo flowers because I've heard a lot of different stuff about what it means when bamboos flower. So I was curious about that. You can see here, I just have some more um, color swatches and some basic stuff here. Um, then I went to this really cool reptile house and you can see, I tried drawing the shape of this, This I think this is a fair de lance or a Bushmaster, um, Bothrops Atrox head. And um, I, I was struggling with the head for sure. And you can see that I try, there's at least you know, 10 different times that I try drawing the, the head from different angles. Um, you can see where I try to break it down into simpler shapes like I did here, geometric shapes. And then I also, in a separate drawing, have the whole body and try to get the pattern. Um, I have an actual size here of the, um, the one of the scales. And then I also have a thing here showing the cross section of the body. So one interesting things about snakes is, and I did this on this um, rainbow bow over here, is the crop to imagine what that, the shape of its body would look like in cross section. Um, my notes are starting to be a mixture of um, English and Spanish because at this point I'm in a Spanish speaking country and the signage is in Spanish. So that's why you can see some of the stuff here it is in Spanish. Now this was a really, this, this other snake was really challenging to get the patterns of. This is the rainbow boa, and part of me didn't even want to deal with it. So you can see I split um, split the work up into two things. So I drew, I was really interested in the way the body was, was positioned and the shadows. And so I did that in one drawing. And then over here, you can see I focused on the pattern. And yeah. And then here also you can see with these other snakes and frogs, I was just focusing on the shape of the body. So sometimes the underlying form and the shape is, is hard to draw when you're also trying to draw the pattern on top of it. In this case, I combined the two, but sometimes it's good to separate those two out. Here's some more stuff. Here's an even a, a way that you could simplify even more. So these both of these snakes, I didn't draw the pattern. Um, this is an emerald tree boa and they do have a, pat, a, a scale pattern, but I just focused on the form and the shape and I wouldn't have been able to get these shadows and this three dimensionality as much if I had also drawn the pattern. 
Um, down here, I went to another Bothrop species, another um, pit viper, uh, South American pit viper. And you can see here, I did an even more abstracted version of the pattern. And this is something that I went on and did a bunch more of these where I created sort of a, um, a system for just showing the pattern and not worrying about the shape of the animal. And this is something that Akshay Mahajan did a really cool job of um, in Tanzania and he created a whole um, simplified way to show the patterns of animals um, without worrying about the underlying um, shape of the animal. And that allows for an easier comparison of just the pattern. Here you can see um, what I'm talking about. I'm continuing with that system where instead of drawing the whole snake, I have this basically simplified way of showing the pattern and can learn a lot more about it and compare them uh, more easily. I also have some um, etymological notes here. Um, here are a couple more snakes. You can see I'm using that same pattern and I'm, I'm comparing them because I'm really interested in camouflage and um, counter shading and all of the different aspects of, of pattern. And I'm looking at the values, um, the value difference between the top part of the, the pattern on the snake and the bottom part. Now I went back and um, started working on um, these, I think these were caimans. You can see here I'm using a diagram to try to understand the pattern of how the scales work on the tail. You can also see here I'm, I'm doing things, I'm doing that iteration approach where I, this head was challenging for me. So you can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven attempts at that head and then some color action going on separately. So I definitely recommend, you know, that many iterations for, for practicing shapes that are hard for you to draw. Here you can see I created a, um, a chart where I compare how many of the snakes have counter shading and which ones don't. And I could have done like a stem leaf plot for that as well. Um, here you can see I have um, simplified this boa constrictor pattern to try to understand it um, and analyze the different colors um, that are in it and how dark they are. And so I'm still doing that, still doing that simplification of the, the patterns. And then here I did, this is still for the boa constrictor. I did a bunch of color tests to try to get these colors. Boa constrictor colors are really challenging grays and browns and purples. Um, here I did a value strip to see like what values I could get and how I could um, recreate the color on the boa constrictor. So this is all at the beginning of the trip. This is in the capital city of Quito. Um, this is now I go to um, the cloud forest of Mendo and there was this amazing butterfly sanctuary. So I got to draw some really challenging subjects. Um, these butterflies had very complex patterns. Uh, you can see here that uh, they have a lot of different um, shapes on them, but also the colors are very challenging. And some of the colors, I tried using wet on wet to represent some of the colors, but that was hard. Here you can see I simplified it and just focused on the eye pattern. Um, lots of questions and notes about the, the camouflage and the pattern. Here you can see my wet on wet. Here I did a close-up where I tried to use my white pen to draw the close-up pattern of what it looks like. Here's a caterpillar. Here's another wet-on-wet uh, -wet experiment and more notes about the those butterflies. They were really cool butterflies. Okay, now I'm starting to get to more. I think this is in Mendo as well in the cloud forest, but I'm trying to practice getting in these jungle landscapes. So landscape eat those, but in the jungle was very fun. I'm not sure what this sidebar is, but this is kind of a cool technique. This is this book is from four years ago, so there's a lot of things in here um, that I could learn from that I'm doing differently now. Sometimes, you know, looking at these old things, we get ideas. Like I like this idea of doing this big wet on wet solid color here. Here's some more birds that I saw when I was at the butterfly sanctuary, trying to draw them, even though they were they were moving quite a bit. Sometimes these tropical places can be really overwhelming. They're, they're what I call these, you know, these stimulus rich environments. Okay, here's some more um, quick sketches of birds and stuff. This is also up in the cloud forest, very humid. Here's a page where I am looking at plants and drawing lots of plants and 
then at the same time as birds come through, I I draw the birds, but a lot of times the birds are only there for a little bit. So having other stuff that you can work on um, with plants is good. Oh, look here, I'm trying to draw compound leaves in perspective. I think Jack just did a video about this on Zoom. And here I'm looking at the seed pod and the different stages of the flowers of Inga, which I actually did a little Instagram video about this recently. This plant is in the bean family in the the Mimosoidae subfamily of the bean family. Really cool tropical tree. All right, moving onwards. Here is some sketching I tried to do in the rain. Um, it was in a cloud forest and it was really wet and I was experimenting with these colored pencils. Um, my paper was getting super wet and I was also using some graphite. I didn't want to take my watercolors out in the rain. There was all these dead bats on the ground. It was starting to get a little bit messy. Um, one thing I did during that time is I created this list where I started writing down notes of, for a rainy weather kit. So remember, your journal can serve a lot of different purposes. And so using it for all the purposes possible, instead of like thinking about it as precious or only having one function, um, will really help you out. Here's another bromeliad, an epiphytic bromeliad growing in this tree that I got to draw and you can see I did a close up and I'm doing a lot of color studies at this time. Um, there was a really cool color gradient and you can see I said difficult to simulate because it was hard for me to draw. Um, and then, you know, there was this other orchid growing in there and here's the leg of um, a bird. Here is looking down at water. Drawing water is always challenging and I was practicing these leaf veins a couple different ways and lots of cool hummingbird action here. And I think this is, yeah, this is, I like to have these bird, running bird lists as I see different birds coming through. And I didn't know the species names on the majority of these and I didn't have a field guide. So you can see, I just describe them as best as I can. And at least that way I have like a running list of what I see. So drawing a landscape or drawing a plant and having a running list of bird activity is always a good approach in nature journaling. All right, so this was, I was in this town of, of uh, Mendo during the New Year's. So I have some stuff about my New Year's resolutions here, a bunch of different New Year's resolution stuff. i uh, using the same book. This is all inside, you know, on rainy days. Okay, here I'm back at that spot again, um, looking at the hummingbirds. Um, I also sometimes smash mosquitoes in my book and then I write about them. Uh, here you can see more of that Inga plant. Oh, here was a really cool mop mot. I tried to do some color studies on that one. More plant studies. I was using graphite a lot back then. Graphite drawing. Did some architectural drawings while I was in town. And now let's skip to, here is a really cool plant that I found. And this is where I just got to the Amazonian side. So I'm about to get on a plane Oh, at this point, I've already gone on the plane and I'm at a, um, at a community, Sapara community in uh, eastern Ecuador in the Amazon. The, it's basically the tri a tributary to the Amazon. And here you can see I'm doing a lot of, um, I'm doing a mixture of note taking in English and Spanish because the people that I'm with, I'm talking to them in Spanish. Here was a super cool orchid. It was this actual size growing epiphytically on the leaves of another plant, and the guy was telling me that that's as big as they ever get. Uh, here was, here's a really good example of me um, thinking I, uh, disagreeing with myself on paper. So I was watching this butterfly landing on the plant, and at first um, I was theorizing that it wasn't laying eggs, and then I later realized that it was laying eggs. And so one thing that's great about journaling in general and nature journaling in particular is you can notice when you're wrong and it's easier to disagree with yourself. All right, I'm gonna keep going. I had to practice these dark greens a lot because there was a lot of that. A little side-by-side -side comparison or joint comparison of two similar trees. Um, some sort of symbolic birds showing the uh, amazing bird flights that were going on. There was a lot of bugs, praying mantids, stuff like that. So I got to draw those a lot. I was drawing all the cooking stuff. 
and was interested in, in that. There was an amazing aura pendula action, really cool birds. So I was trying to, this is almost like a nature comic. This is showing action um, of the flight path that these birds were following and also just the different sounds that I was hearing coming from them. I think pretty. Uh, I think a couple days after this, we went on a river trip. But here's the dawn chorus. I would get out every morning, trying to get this foggy look of the the jungle in the morning was was challenging. Um, you can see I've got my metadata. I'm gonna look back at this book and, and copy some ideas from here. But you can see I've got this um, this metadata across the top like that with a little bit of color. It's kind of fun. Some close ups on a beetle, a really cool eagle. Some just notes here. Sometimes just adding, you know, a little a little strip of colors at the bottom of a page of text can can add a lot of interest. Um, so here is on the river trip. I drew the. This is the type of propeller that they use in shallow rivers um, in the Amazon, and it it's it's on this long pole like that. And then this is the a type of grass that they used to use for poling. Um, and you can see here of this really cool vulture species. And more, this is actually as we're going in the canoe, a canoe, a slow moving canoe can be a great place in nature journal from. This was some amazing caterpillars in this huge bundle. This was like a nature journaling paradise. Oh, here is where uh, we stopped um, for lunch and we actually ate these like grubs and monkey and yucca and um, that's what the, the people served us there. Here is the cooking fire that they were using, which is basically just two logs lying like that and the pot in the middle. Here's a bunch of really cool, I think these are all orapindola nests and some notes about chicha because everybody was drinking chicha there. That's one of the staple food slash beverages. Um, I was really having fun with these, trying to get these landscapes in. About this point in the trip, my watercolor palette was starting to melt and more orapindolas, you can see their pendulous nests. There's also these bees, these like sweat bees that would get like in your eyes and in your ears. Um, here's some sketching that I did in graphite and you can see this just doesn't translate as well. This was all of the bugs that were coming to um, salt. So salt is um, a lacking resource in most jungles and in the Amazon it's um, it's very rare so when there's places that there's salt or any minerals you'll see all these butterflies landing and bees and all kinds of insects so for example where you pee the night before the next morning there could be tons of insects on it so I was doing a study there um, and also just counting at least the, the insect orders that I know of how many of each order were represented so these were mostly um, Hymenoptera so bee species I tried to show what the tongue looked like because the bee's tongue was coming in and out to get the minerals. It was really fascinating. Some of the days there was like a lot of hiking and all I could do is at the end of the day in my tent, write everything down that I could remember. That's another way you can nature journal is just um, after the fact, try to write down everything that you remember. It's, it's a lot more challenging. Um, here is some trees and this was a monitor, a type of monitor lizard, uh, I believe that was actually not a monitor lizard, some type of iguana, I think that was um, killed by an eagle and one of the guys that we were with found it. And here's something that I haven't been doing very much lately, but I like is using an element that goes across two pages like that. I think I must have done this text box afterwards. Here is some sort of simplified stuff. This is actually inspired by Gauguin. I like how Gauguin paints uh, tree branches uh, dividing the space. So I was just having a little fun with my, I think this is that jumbo correction pin. Um, I was just having fun painting in. Because one thing I wanted to practice is a lot of times um, in the Amazon rainforest, the tree um, bark is a really pale color. And with watercolors, that's a challenge to draw. So I was just sort of doing this as a practice to draw the branches and to see what that would look like over a darker green background. Here's a really fun experience that I had with a praying mantis. I think I have a video about this, but this praying mantis was hanging out with me for a while, like walking around on my journal. Here you can see what I'm talking about with the white tree, trying to draw a white tree in front of a dark foliage background is really hard with watercolor, but that's a common occurrence in the South American tropics at least. Here is some more um, 
more bird sketches, a really cool, look like a pileated woodpecker and a cool falcon and a, a neat um, fruit that I got to eat. So I was doing a little ethnobotanical nature journaling there. You can see that sometimes just a, a silhouette of a bird can be a really, really useful thing. And then on our way out, we were at a restaurant. Um, this was towards the end of the trip and even just practicing drawing a couple times at a restaurant. I wish I did this more lately, but this keeps you warmed up. So if you do a couple sketches at the restaurant, then the next day when you go on your trip or your hike, um, you're warmed up. And when you see that bird for only like 30 seconds, you're ready to draw it really quickly. So I recommend, you know, if you can build a habit of just drawing all the time, even when it's things that look like they're kind of challenging shapes or part of a building if you can get in that habit of just drawing all the time it's 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 really helpful and then when you see the bird for only a few seconds those shapes will be will be easier to capture so this is sort of towards the end of my trip i think i actually ended up filling a whole nother book on this trip um, but this is just the one that i'm going to share today i did a really great index and this is something i need to do more is doing an index um, at the end of my book and uh, that way things are easier to find and it, it's kind of can be kind of a fun thing you can also see here there's a little bit of like mud stains up here because this book almost fell into um, one of the tributary the Canambo River which is one of the tributaries of the Amazon we're on this look my index actually has a cool picture of it we're on this canoe and I almost dropped my journal into the river and some of it got wet muddy and wet there so anyways, just wanted to share that with you. Some things that I learned just looking through this are that an index can be really useful, that these full page kind of color blocks can be really nice and to kind of loosen up a little bit with some of my, some of my art tools um, and that these just drawing all the time, even if I'm in the airport, is such a powerful tool and such a good practice and that these color swatches are really fun and really useful. So I hope that you enjoyed going on this little voyage with me through a journal. I hope you learned something and had some fun and got some ideas that you can use in your nature journaling. And if you want some more ideas and more inspiration, check out these two videos that I picked for you here. Subscribe to the channel over here and I will see you next week. Bye.